Hey, I'm Justin from Jacob Elk Reptiles. Hi, my name is Miguel Garcia from Always Evolving Pythons. I'm Brian Cusco. Hey guys, I'm Troy with Best Dressed Balls. Hey, I'm Bob from Bob's Balls. Hey, this is John Dagg, JD Constriction. Never watch. Never watch. Never. Never watch. BRH Reptiles. BRH Reptiles on YouTube. BRH Reptiles on YouTube. BRH Reptiles on YouTube. And I have no idea who BRH Reptiles are, and I definitely don't watch their videos. And I never watch BRH Reptiles on YouTube. And you shouldn't either, to be honest. Hey YouTube, welcome back to BRH Reptiles. My name is Brian and last week was in ARBC. It was in town, had so much fun. Uh, it was good to see everybody. To, to travel the show, to interact with all the vendors. And you guys, if you're watching, I really appreciate you. You were just awesome to work with and I had a lot of fun, met a lot of new friends um, and it was great. For those of you who have uh, checked out the videos and commented, thank you so much. What a warm reception. And um, so I'm super pumped to do uh, more of these, these videos here. Uh, today, I wanna talk to you about why and how I breed African softbird rats for my colony. I wanna go over a couple things like the controversy behind ASFs, should you, shouldn't you. I wanna talk about uh, the complications people have when you don't have success breeding uh, your African softbird rats, um, you know, biting and eating their babies and that type of thing. I wanna walk you through my husbandry, how I do it, what I feed, uh, how often I clean, the substrate I use, the size tubs, everything that works for me personally. Um, I wanna go into some kind of tips, maybe to help a few of you out. I'm not uh, the experienced running a full-fledged facility African software breeder, but uh, just wanna say what I have to say, I guess. Um, and then I wanna to talk to you about my philosophy, why I've chosen ASFs, what do I really feed, um, how often do I feed them, um, and the reason why and kind of my thought process behind that. Um, so appreciate you stopping by. Let's jump in. All right, let's jump into it here. Uh, so let me first start by saying I'm not an expert in breeding African softwares or any other rats. I'm not even an expert in breeding anything, but I am someone who is just choosing to share my experience. This is what I'm doing. This is what working for me and I thought I would share. So first of all, what is an African softbird rat? If you don't know, an African softbird rat is just that. It's a rat that's native to Africa. Uh, instead of the American traditional kind of fancy rat that we have here, these are rats that are native to Africa. Uh, they come in a variety of patterns and colors, just like our fancy rats, uh, but they are a lot smaller. Uh, they can only really reach 130, 140 grams as adults. That's an equal in size to about a medium fancy rat. Um, but it would take a lot of time for them to get that size. Most of the African softbird rats that I raise and feed are in the 60 to 90 gram range, um, making them pretty comparable to a small American rat. Uh, a little bit about why they're controversial. Um, African softbird rats are quite controversial in the ball python hobby. Uh, it's commonly accepted that a ball python will always happily take an ASF meal when otherwise it's not on feed. For that reason, many use African softbird rats for their picky eaters or snakes who have been off food for long periods of time. It's also the same reason why a lot of people poo poo the idea of African softbird rats as crack for your snake. Because once switched to ASFs, it's usually more difficult to get a piggy eater back on traditional rats, which are cheaper and easier to find. So finding African softbird rats could be the problem if your snake won't take anything else. Uh, I do believe that snakes can get stuck on African softbird rats, which could pose a problem. Um, but you gotta think, would you rather your picky eater not eat at all? or would you rather it eat an African softbird rat um, indefinitely for a long period of time? I can tell you that I feed African softbird rats every other week and fat, fancy rats, the traditional American rat, every other week. I switch back and forth with almost no problem. I only have one African softbird eater 
that won't switch back. Uh, and for that reason, you know, my my grow ups, my, my holdbacks and my breeders, I'll continue to flip back and forth or even switch primarily to African softbird rats. But because of the concerns by the consumers for snakes that I sell, my babies that I hatch will always go to, to rat fuzzies, traditional rat fuzzies. Um, a lot of people say that an African softbird rat has more nutritional value than a fancy rat or they're higher in protein. Uh, of uh, uh, an African software that's equal to the size of a fancy rat, maybe has more protein or more tr nutrition. You know, I'm no scientist, but I've never really seen any compelling data that substantiates those claims. But I can say this, in the wild, ball pythons don't eat fancy American rats. They eat African software rats. Don't even have access to the rats that we have here in the, in the States, and yet they still survive thrive and reproduce in the wild. Another uh, part of uh, what makes an African softbird rat controversial, some say that they're mean, they're terrible little bastards who bite constantly. Well, I could say that by keeping the animals, um, that's far from the case from my experience. I've been bit by a ton of fanc fancy rats, but I've actually never been bit by an ASF. I go through the tubs, pretty much weekly check on things. Um, I mess with them, I pet them, I get in there, I, I pick up their babies, I put their babies down, and I really never have uh, that big of a problem. So second, uh, kind of my husbandry, how I keep my rats, what I feed, what I do. So I keep my breeding colonies in these Freedom Breeder 1050 tens, the FB10 tubs. That's the rack, the 1050 10, otherwise known as an expensive ass rack for rats. Uh, I've chosen a one to four ratio. That's one male for every four females per tub. I found that production is significant, although from time to time, a particular tub might be too full at once. Um, and I saw a likely move to a 1.3 and I don't think I'll lose any production because the moms uh, will, will better be able to nurse their young. Um, you might've also heard that African softwood rats have less odor um, and that's true um, the tub size is a lot less they don't get as dirty they're not as um, stinky so what I do is I put about a quarter to half a cup of pine pellets at the bottom of each tub just to cut down on that smell as much as possible uh, the pine pellets turn to dust pretty quickly uh, when they're peed on and, and trampled on um, and it makes dumping out the soiled tubs a breeze um, at the same time of being able to hold some of that stench at bay. On top of the pine pellets, I use a healthy bed of uh, large flake pine shavings or any pine shavings, and I don't skimp. Again, anecdotally, I've had much more success in breeding after giving my rats a really nice thick layer. It almost goes all the way up to the top of the tub so they can kind of burrow in um, and nest down in there. Um, uh, and the pine pellets themselves, it's like eight bucks for a bag and I can fill the rack with the pine pellets you know, three times over. And the, the mulch is also like $8 and I can use, you know, it's about one bag per the rack. So it's very cheap uh, to keep them. But to keep African Salford rats successfully, you do need to keep them clean. They prefer a more clean um, environment to reproduce. Um, but the good news is they're easier to keep clean because they're more clean by nature. Um, they also can be kept at a much higher temperature than our fancy rats. So that's why I'm able to have them here in the garage. So African softbird rats can do anywhere from 68 to 85 degrees. And it, actually even higher than that's not out of the question. But an American fancy rat couldn't tolerate anything 85 or above, or even approaching that, you're gonna start having problems with sweating and odor and them eating each other. They can't really tolerate the climate that an African softbird rat, because again, African softbird rats are native to Africa where the ball pythons are kept. So very similar environments. In fact, exactly the same. Um, so that also makes them a good fit for me to raise here in Texas. I personally feed the Missouri Rodent Breeder 6F uh, this is different than their rat and mouse feed 
um, which is kind of double the cost. A 50 pound bag of the Missouri 6F, which is called the Rodent Breeder, comes in around 35 bucks. And the, uh, the rat and mouse diet is like a 25 pound bag for the same price. So use the Missouri Rodent Breeder. And its part is pretty straightforward. Um, I feed a high quality nutritional food. Um, and this next part is also anecdotal. On top of the rodent food, I feed a good quality dog food that has a much higher protein than the Missouri 6F. So when I was first collecting my colonies, um, one local guy that I was getting them from said that he had much better success when he upped their protein level. Um, and sure enough, that when my, mo when my mothers gave birth for the first time and they were just on the Missouri, they ate their babies for the first few litters and I went through the same struggles that, that almost everybody else did. When he told me this, I started to put a layer of dog food that's 23% protein on top of the rodent breeder. And the Missouri rodent breeder is only 18% protein. So it's a lot higher in protein. And the nursing moms stopped eating their babies, started to raise their babies. Um, and then as I, as I kept going and learning, if I forgot to put dog food in there, I would see a litter of dead babies from time to time. And I realized that that protein level was crucial for the nursing mothers. So anytime I've got a, a baby's tub, a tub with a mom and some babies, I make sure that it's got access to both the dog food and the Missouri rodent breeder. And again, that works for me. Um, and I know that that's probably a lot of people's biggest challenge is how to get the moms from not eating their babies. Uh, so for me, it's anecdotal, makes sense to me, um, it works, and uh, that's what I'm gonna stick with. And also this next part is non-negotiable. For success with your ASF litters, they can't be without water for any period of time. I tell you, I've lost so many colonies because I've let the water run out for a half a day or a day. When it's warm in the garage, it's warm in the snack rake, the snake area, they've got to have water a hundred percent of the time. Do not let them run out of water. That's the easiest part, part of the care to let slide because it's in a bucket, it's way at the top. I forget to check if it's full. And that is hands down the biggest roadblock for me in success is the times when I've let them not, uh, not have access to water. So a few more tips uh, for success to hopefully help some of you um, out there who are trying to breed uh, and grow up some ASFs. Again, uh, a couple of quick things. They appreciate the more comfy, cozy space of a smaller tub. They have easier access to food and water in those tubs. And I, I, I found little to no success breeding in larger spaces. For example, my holding tubs are the Freedom Breeder FB70s. No success breeding large colonies like a 2.10 or a 2.15 in those tubs. Now, however, I do move all of my weaned into those tubs and they can easily get food and water. However, I've found little to no success in breeding in those larger spaces. So the small confined space of an FB10 tub seems to be ideal. On top of the smaller tubs, I feed and supplement with things like carrots, greens, eggs, bird seed, basically things that I know that they'll enjoy eating whenever I think to do so. I don't have a specific regimen, uh, but when I order groceries, I'll make sure to order $10 bags of carrots as an example, so I can throw a carrot in with each one. And they seem to really enjoy snacking on those. Particularly, I make sure that my grow ups have these types of high quality treats because ultimately that's what I'm feeding my snakes. So I want the best quality rodents to go into my snakes. Um, and that means making sure that if I'm going to supplement with some food that I'm making sure it gets to those, those grow ups, the moms, they really need the protein of the dog food, but the grow ups, they get the treats. Um, and I also try to wait uh, to pull out my weaned rats until they reach a pretty good size. So I found when I pull them out a little too early, maybe it's five to six days too early, that they don't grow up to be a, an adult quite as quick. 
you can tell when you open a tub and it's like, okay, that rat is, is ready to go. Great. If you can see, and it looks like a, a full, small, mini African software, you're good to go to pull it. If it looks like a weaned, sometimes I just wait an extra couple of days so that I can get bigger rats more quickly. But you do have to weigh this with um, how full and how crowded the tubs are. When the tubs get really crowded because there's a lot of babies, if you don't pull them, then the moms are gonna suffer, the adults are gonna suffer, all the other babies are gonna suffer. So I make sure to try to give them a little bit of extra time. And again, fresh water all the time. Do not forget to make sure they have good water. The bullet points for my tips of success are fresh water, good quality food, higher protein for the nursing mamas, and more uh, confined space for the colonies and clean bedding all the time. So again, my philosophy and why I switched back from fancy to ASFs is that I found my snakes eat well on either. And that's a sign to me that my snake colonies or that my, my collection is doing really well. Um, I can't say you will find the same level of success feeding ASFs and getting your snakes to jump back and forth, but I'm, I'm confident anybody can do what I'm doing. Uh, I didn't invent, you know, rat breeding. So I think it's actually kind of ideal. I might actually think that a hundred percent ASF diet is more ideal. Uh, the more, the longer I go, and the more I can maintain my colony with my own or my collection with my own colony, the more likely I'm going to continue to maybe even trans transition over to 100% ASFs all the time. I have 3,000, 3,500 gram females that laid clutches of seven or eight with no slugs and all they ate for the entire year was ASFs. I had one of those. Um, so they're easier to keep in a smaller space. They don't have to be super cool with the greatest ventilation like fancy rats and they breed like crazy without that 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 large space and again it's natural prey and it's what our snakes eat in the wild so i don't see a problem with them eating them in our collection and i know that's controversial for a lot of people they don't want to feed their snakes asf but i truly believe that it might actually be better for your snakes so uh, that is my philosophy my tips for success and, and how i do it all right, everybody, thanks for checking out this video on how I keep my African softbird rats. It's been a couple weeks actually since I filmed it, so uh, it's been a long time getting this out. So I hope you really liked it, hope you appreciate it. Hopefully you found something interesting that'll help you uh, keeping your own colony of African softbird rats. And uh, there it is, that's it. Until next time, peace. <laughs>